side. Welcome to episode 13 of the Homemade Sketch Show. Episode 13. 13 episodes. Lucky 13. We did it. You did it. I am your guest host, Megan Hanley, and I am absolutely thrilled to be here performing in my own bedroom. That's how we do it. It's homemade, and we're at our homes. I'm happy about it. I haven't had a reason to put hair and makeup on at 6 p.m. on a Friday in a very long time. Other talk show hosts, I don't know. They're dropping like flies. Ellen, I don't know what's going on with Ellen. She's too nice. She's too mean. Who knows? Jimmy Kimmel? Jimmy Kimmel had to take a break because he wants to spend more time with his family. Uh, trust me, anyone I know who's been quarantined with their family does not want to spend more time with their family. He's just sick of performing in his living room. I don't know. It's been really eye-opening. It's been really eye-opening. These celebrities, uh, in the beginning of this, Rosie O'Donnell did a fundraiser for the Actors Fund. The Actors Fund. Very important. Very important for people like me. Helps us get money. Yeah. <laughs> right? So she had all these Broadway stars on to raise money for the Actors Fund. And more than half of them didn't sing. She had an Adina Menzel. Adina, Men Adina Menzel. Frozen. Red. Wicked. And she was just like, hey, Rosie, I'm just here in my kitchen. Yeah, and what I realized is I just still can't cook. That's not going to help the Actors Fund. That's not going to help. Me? Adina, we don't want to relate to you. We want to be entertained by you. And then so many of them didn't know how to use the video feature on their phone. The worst one was Judith Light. Judith Light, Law and Order, the politician. Who's the boss? She, she was talking this close the whole time. Going, Rosie? Rosie? Can you hear me? Rosie? Is that you? Rosie? I'm like, oh my gosh, Judith Light, we know the answer to one question. Who's the boss? Tony Danza. Well, I know how to do the video. Oh, I'm already screwing up words. I'm getting so excited. I know how to use the video feature on my phone most of the time. Zoom, sometimes still tricky. I feel like my mom. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. But I am thrilled to be hosting this show for you tonight. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to episode 13 of the Homemade Sketch Show. when I met Shaman Steve and attended his spiritual retreat. Through persistence and giving him a thousand dollars, I became a master level spiritual healer guru. Sad all the time, I could never make relationships work. But then I harnessed my chakras and I read every book by Osho and Yoko Ono and I added couples counseling to my business. Let me help you and your partner discover every problem that you didn't even realize you were having. Trust me, I have a certificate. I'm Guru Gina. Together we'll make a sacred ritual with a bunch of these tumbled stones, a Yankee candle, and a lock of your hair, cause that's just creepy. And if I can make it just a little weird, I can charge you more for it. I take beautiful pictures out in nature with my cell phone, and I have perfectly straight teeth because my parents paid for braces, and that makes you think that I know something about having a healthy lifestyle. There's a plant in that picture. That means I'm an environmentalist. You trust me, and we are so busy convincing your friends to trust me and reading spiritual quotes from other people that you forget that you actually know more about this stuff than I do. But I'm a life coach. I'm Guru Gina. All of my followers agree, and no one knows why. But take my next seminar and change your life. Just $5,000 to 
today only. I won't be disclosing the itinerary, because I don't want you to see that I'm full of crap. But tomorrow the price goes up, and you don't want to miss out on things you already knew, but you forgot you did. But you're going to relearn them from me, because I'm your life coach. I'm Guru Gina. Something makes you feel uneasy about me, but that's just your excitement. You trust me for some reason. It's because I'm pretty. I'm your life coach. I'm Guru Gina. I'm here to extort, I mean support you through all the problems that you didn't know that you were having. So while you get out your credit card, I will read you this beautiful quote from Lincoln Park. One thing, I don't know why, it doesn't even matter how hard I try, keep that in mind, I design this rhyme to explain in due time all I know. Powerful stuff. Hope to see you for the first few days to kick off my vacation in Bali. Check out my website and book now. Don't worry about if those pesky links are broken. They're supposed to be. I'm a life coach. I don't have any credentials. Book now at www.gurugina.com. Namaste. y'all is d'andrew dean your local gay always trying to stay relevant like whoa uh, should i get a tiktok or no somebody tell me baby i'm confused about this tiktok thing moving on <laughs> i hopped on this old thing to send a huge congratulatory congratulations to mrs beyonce giselle Noel's carter <laughs> on the epic fabulosity that is black is king you see i'm out here in the jungle giving looks right now you got me out here beyonce i bought an african mask i done bought me a little shirt and i got my toes out how about that and you know i don't do this but beyonce you done did it you done did something even in the jungle wasn't no white people in the whole thing but set one white person to brush queen mother's teeth out for this next segment honey oh I'm gonna create one of baddest V's, baddest looks from Blackest King. Y'all know I stay cute every day. Come get this smoke, ho. Now it's time for tea. My good Judy is one of the top Beyonce fan page contributors and he purportedly got Beyonce's real life cell phone number. He was too afraid to ever, ever, ever use it um, because he knows that if he were to have used it, he would have died immediately. Done. You dead. Okay, girl. But myself, I'm not afraid. All right, we're going to see about this. <laughs> Hello? Girl. Hello? Girl. Do you know who you are? <laughs> I am Beyonce. This on the card. Are you pressed? Oh, I am gagged, honey. Am, am impressed. Yes, I am pressed. Uh-huh, pressed. Okay. Well, um, let's see. My aspiration in life is to be happy. Okay, baby. Uh -huh. oh, oh, I got a few notes. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Miss Carter. Um, I, I do have a couple of questions real quick. Uh, Black is king is the only thing anybody's talking about that's why i'm wearing this crown if you can tell um and it is epic what was it like uh directing it but also being in almost every shot like was you really directing i mean you don't you know give me the tea but you know a journey is a gift something to offer at the door to the rooms of your mind this is how we journey far and can still always find something like home. Oh, okay. She's deep, honey. Yes, Beyonce ain't never, never been deep. Okay, okay. That's okay. I, I received that um, blessing too. Oh, um, okay. On the real tip, what was it like having a white man brush your grill? Oh, <laughs> that was that was like powerful. So not for sale. Probably won't make no money off this. Oh well. Reap what you sow. Perfection is so. 
We love Black Joy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I mean, my mood could be stay on this call forever, but uh, I know you got a baby. You a busy woman and everything. Um, tell Blue we love her. She's the one we re- really think about. Um, and since you feature her so prominently, and but despite the fact that you have two other children, do you think they will harness jealousy or any type of rage? Um, just because everything was about Blue. Not black, not white, you know what I mean? Uh, I told Rumi and Sir, if we're gonna heal, then let it be glorious. <laughs> well, honey, that conversation was kind of like the movie. I don't know what the hell she was talking about, but it was deep, and the outfit was fly like Zazu. I king already, I king already, I king already. See y'all later. It's DeAndre Dean, honey, and it's hot in this thing. Hello. Uh, so my name used to be Helen Henderson, but I legally had it changed to Helen Henderson in honor of my hands. Uh, I was actually after a traumatic injury. It's hard to speak of. I had a hangnail. I called 911 and... Thankfully, I received the care that I needed and I healed. Um, since then, I've been very careful. Even a few years later, I slipped and fell on some ice, but thankfully, I had the good sense not to brace myself with my hands. I quickly did a vampire pose and my head broke the fall. Phew. <laughs> so I escaped with these unscathed, at least. Um, had a concussion, but fine for my hands. Uh, I always, always wear protection now. I find oven mitts are the best. I've, I've tried other gloves, but I just don't find them to be quite as effective. I think George Costanza had it right, if you've seen that episode of Seinfeld. People like to make fun, and they like to say that when I'm working, I'm doing hand jobs. Ha ha. But it's, it's very serious work, and I have an incredibly a strict regime when it comes to taking care of my hands. I moisturize like crazy. I, I actually set a timer at set intervals throughout the day to make sure they're getting enough hydration. And, you know, it, there really isn't a second that goes by that I'm not thinking about my hands, much like having children. Of course, I would never have real children because they would dirty up my hands too much. <laughs> I have different colored oven mitts and my hands let me know which ones they'd like to wear on any particular day. I, I have to say though, some days they don't agree and I can't always let Righty have her way just because she's the dominant hand. I try to respect their individual personalities, so some days you'll see me wearing two different oven mats and that is why. <laughs> hand modeling is really so much more than just posing. I consider my hands to be elite prima ballerinas. They're just so flexible and graceful. And I appreciate that they're always pushing me towards making bolder choices of self-expression as an artist. I think probably the most fascinating part of my job has been when I'm hand doubling. And that's a very specific industry term for when your hands are acting as someone else's hands. So you might get right in there and right up, you know, touching their body as if you're their hands, right? And so I can be in some pretty awkward positions, you know, right up in someone's armpit. Um, and I have caressed some very notable celebrity faces, but I, I won't say because a hand model would never touch and tell. It's definitely not a job that just anyone can do. I mean, I definitely won the genetic lottery. I mean, but I've also worked very hard on my technique. And I mean, just look at the nail beds and the length of the fingers and just the fluidity with which they touch a phone screen or press a button on an appliance or stroke a big name product. I mean, I really feel as if my hands chose me. I know they did because they knew that I would share them. 
and bring them out into the world to showcase products as they were meant to do. Um, so, oh, <laughs> they're, they're appreciative. Um, but yes, my hands and I are going to be very, very happy together. Are we having a good time or what? Well, how about a little bit of music? Each week, the Homemade Sketch Show brings a new musical act up to the screen, and this week is no different. Here, all the way from D.C., performing their new song, Dirt, which is going to be on their upcoming album, which they're currently fundraising for, and you can be a part of on LightmareDC.com. Please, put your hands together for Lightmare. <laughs> God being in the sky. Seventh grade really sucked. Okay, Caroline's mad at me because I told the whole lunch table that she had her period. And then she got mad at me because I bought the same t-shirt as her at Delia's. Now she won't let me sit at the lunch table. I thought getting glasses and braces would make you cool, but I guess not. Oh, please, God. Please just let me be popular. Please. Let me have a reason to use crutches. No, I know what you're going to say. You don't want to break your ankle for some stupid social hierarchy. You're right. I don't. I want crutches to be the most popular girl in the seventh grade. Imagine me walking through the hallways of seventh grade in my low-rise boot-cut jeans and an unexplained injury. OMG, my BFF Jill, I heard she got in a car accident. No, I heard that she scored the winning goal in soccer and the losing team came over and- No, her. I heard she was caught in a police chase. She is so cool. We'll go shopping with us in and Hollister without our moms. I heard she's doing the school announcements in the morning. She's so cool. She's in my new so MySpace cool. tab See, God, they think I'm cool and mysterious, and right now, I'm smelly and predictable. 
Oh, hey, are you okay? Want me to help carry your books? Also, want to come to the dance tonight? We can grind. He said he's going to teach me how to grind. And Caroline will have to take me back because I'll be the coolest girl in seventh grade. Won't they find out you just rolled your ankle picking up a doll? No, because social media doesn't exist yet and my Blackberry can only take pictures of things like this close. When my friends are going to decorate my crutches and when they'll ask how I've been. Oh, please, God, please. I promise. If you want what you want. Welcome, my lovely fans. It's your Screen Queen Best Actress Award winner, 1999, for the 18 faces of Eve. All 18 of them! <laughs> and then I never worked again. <laughs> but don't worry, today I'm just Eve, number one. Or am I? Hitchcock's cousin bought me this. So many of you have written in just begging me to tell you what I do to my skin to never age. What is your secret, you say? You haven't aged a wink, you declare, and so on and so on. Well, it's not Botox. I can't afford it. And it's not witchcraft. Or is it? <laughs> It's a good old-fashioned skincare routine that I repeat in three simple steps at 18 minutes past the hour, every hour, on the hour, every day. And today is your lucky day. So come on in. I'm going to share it. Step one, 150 years of tried and true greatness. I have an entire bunker in Vegas full of these. Just dig right in there and start putting it on your face. Mmm. 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 Really smear it on so you can barely see anything. Step two. This step you don't want to skimp. Use the whole roll if necessary. If you're not lightheaded, you're doing it wrong. Really, wrap yourself in there. Oh! Step three. This is the most important step of all. You can use any box full of ice. You should feel completely numb, like you're going to die. And that's it. Three steps to remaining timeless. I forgot the most important tip. Always, always, always sip, sip, sip. One must stay hydrated. This is gasoline strength vodka made from Russian babies. Here's to the fans! Be sure to repeat every hour. My name is Nikki Nazratala, and this is my fashion timeline for Vanity Unfair. So going through all of my looks from the homemade sketch show starting from the beginning. Um, oh, this look right here. Um, I was going for something grungy. It was Garrett's ASMR uh, punk show. So uh, like alt punk review, I think is what I called it. I don't know. I don't actually like punk. So that's a, a trade secret for you is uh, the characters that I play on the show are not necessarily a reflection of myself. Here I'm playing a grungy character. So I needed uh, a plaid shirt because uh, 
plaid to me is like Seattle. So I just wear a basic tee underneath and a plaid shirt and it kind of roughed up my hair a little bit and I grew my beard out specifically for this, uh, for this sketch. And I also grew up my hair for this sketch. Oh, and here we have my uh, activist uh, tears. And uh, in this sketch, I wore this, um, this blue t-shirt um, that comes from the Oscar de la Renta collection. And we actually didn't think we were gonna get it. We didn't, we didn't think we were gonna get it because we selected it and they said they wouldn't be sending it. And then two days before filming, uh, uh, we got a, an email saying that it's, it's actually been on loan to Tom Cruise for the next Mission Impossible film. Uh, but I mean, we put our foot down and we said, I'm sorry, we've already booked it. So we, we need, we need this, this shirt. Uh, and think of the promotion, like just think of, think of what this is going to do for Oscar De La Renta's career when this shows up on the homemade sketch show, uh, on YouTube. And so we got it. Oh, see now this one here is also a blue, but it's a more, it's a brighter blue. It really brings out my eyes. I wore this for the activist, um, the activist karaoke sketch. Uh, because I wanted to just really uh, look good. Oh, this is a big one. This is a big one. So this is the, this is the puppet love sketch. Um, and in this one, I actually, so we had the same stylist for this sketch that Beyonce used for the Black is King release on Disney Plus recently. So I'm so happy we can finally talk about it now that it's been released because we've been on an NDA for so long. Uh, but we did use the same stylist and it was shot around the same time as well. So uh, in Black is King, I think Beyonce has 63 different looks. Um, we actually had 68 different looks in, in the Puppet Love sketch. Uh, these are just a, this is just a sampling of them, it's not all of them. But we're really proud of the work that we did uh, on this sketch with, with these outfits. Um, and I do want to thank Beyonce for personally loaning me out her stylist because, I mean, it just elevated it. It just took everything to the next level. Okay, so this one's interesting because this is the first time we see a repeat shirt. If you remember the YouTube um, crier, this is the actually the same shirt. A little piece, of, a little Easter egg for you. I don't know if you noticed, but in the in the sketch where I'm cleaning the apartment, uh, it's actually the same shirt. Not a lot of people clocked it. So for this one was the um, anti-mask video, and in this one. I needed to, to convey someone from the South. So I decided to wear a gray t-shirt. And this is actually the exact same gray t-shirt that um, David Schwimmer wears on Friends in episode uh, 279. So if you if you check that one out, it's the one with the gray t-shirt. Um, this is the exact same one. So here uh, is, is the I'm Afraid of the Gym sketch. And uh, in this one, I actually wore another gray shirt. It's not the same one. A lot of people think it was the same one, but it's not. And you can see my hair. I did something differently with my hair this time. I, um, I pulled it back into, a, into a, a half pony. And that really changed up the character. And, um, and my hair and makeup team were just like, they were just really on point that day. Variety is so important when you're creating different characters. And so for this one, for the, for the Katie plus 80, which actually aired last week, I decided to do another little, um, another repeat look because some of my looks have become so iconic that people are like, well, we need to see that again. So I decided to bring back the shirt. In fact, I'm wearing it now again um, because um, my closet is unlimited and, and the amount of stylists that I work with is unlimited. Uh, but sometimes it's nice to give someone a familiarity, to give the audience something to remember you by. Uh, and so uh, we've decided that this uh, t-shirt, which I actually handmade myself, it was one of the first looks I ever hand sewed. Uh, anyway, I, ma I made this look and uh, I will be releasing a line later this year. I cannot talk about it yet. I can't, I can't reveal any details about it. But um, if you shop at Kmart, and so I'm saying. Anyway, thank you Vanity Unfair for having me to talk about my iconic looks from the Homemade Sketch Show. I can't wait to show you what else I've got in my closet. Stay tuned. Well, that is the end of our show. Thank you so much for joining us this week on the Homemade Sketch Show, episode 13. You can find the Homemade Sketch Show every week on YouTube, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you enjoyed it, like, click, share, text your friend, tell your mom, get the word out. And if you really enjoyed it, like you would watch this, even if you weren't stuck inside during a pandemic, kind of like, there is a link below. Click on that and make a donation to the platform group. All contributions go to creators of this week's episode. People like me, artists that are just 
you know, sort of out of work right now indefinitely. So we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. I have been your host, Megan Hanley. Until we meet again, be well and be safe. Put some glasses on.